can see you, Daddy. I still can. Okay. Daddy surrenders. Let me put it this way. I think in Vietnam the green's a different color, okay? Come on, let's get back. What are you two doing? Car's sitting here half packed. Which one to get to this vacation time again? This show and Stevie, how we used to camouflage ourselves in the green berets. That's it's all. Invisible, Ma. You're not taking that horrible uniform to carry with us. Oh, darling, don't be silly. He was hanging in the basement when we went to get the fishing rods, and he asked. You can't blame him for that. Marry an American, have spoilt brats, believe you me. Oh, really? Marry an Irish lass, and you get nagged at all the time. Mm. Give me those two. Am I on two? You can't be on toe without toe shoes. Now, Melody, put the tutu back in the bag. I said you could take it. Honestly, it's going to be two in the afternoon before we drive out the driveway. You go nagging again. We'll be in care before dark. Oh, and there are two cases in the kitchen. Look who's carrying them. Martha. Give me those, Martha. No trouble, Mr. Dunning. There they are. Give this way to Stevie. Not too heavy for you, is it? Huh? Sure, it's not heavy. Martha, take that. Okay, thanks. Okay, in you get. Nobody can see you at all. No, just like we were invisible. I want to see that invisible. Well, come here. Stevie, Daddy doesn't do that anymore. You see, war is mean and horrible and nasty, and Mommy was probably right. I shouldn't have shown it to you. That thing in Vietnam was stupid and a big mistake. So you forget about it, okay? Okay. Telephone, Mr. Donegan. Telephone is ringing. Hello, Mr. Donegan. The main office in Connecticut just rang. Well, I know you're going on holidays, but I thought it would be better to tell you before you went. What? No. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, tell you what I'll do. I'll take it with me on the holiday and I'll try and go through it. But I don't guarantee anything, okay? <laughs> what? Oh, we will, believe you me. Thanks a lot. See you in a couple of weeks. in the car, darling. We're here. Sure did. We're here. Hey, big buddy. Tomorrow morning, I'll make you bet. We'll get a striped bass about oh, that big. Daddy, I'm going to be a ballerina. I know. Shh, shh, go to sleep, Melody. Good grief, Melody. Go to sleep. Shh, you too. Are you happy, Stephen? Hmm? Are you happy? Am I happy? 
I got a job I like. I got a lovely family. I got a lovely home. Two lovely homes. Am I happy? No wonder you're satisfied here in Ireland. What are you talking about? Well, sometimes I'm afraid you'll miss a competition in America. Miss that jungle? Are you kidding? So glad to be out of that executive rat race. Darling, I've fought enough battles in my time. Let somebody else do the fighting from now on. I love you. Do you love me? Mrs. Dunnigan, you're the nicest person I ever met. You're the dearest face on this earth. I'm the luckiest man alive. So shut up. Young Peter or Lachlan, of course. Oh, he's over here now at the head of the force. I met him one day. I was passing his friend. And he stopped the whole street with one wave of his hand.
myself being left in the cottage, but I found the gentleman's briefcase in the head of me. Will I give it to him? Uh, no, no, not now, not at this time. Uh, I want to get our friend here back to Dublin. Look, put it in the, the boot of his own car and follow him behind us. Mr. Toombs, tell him I got his wire. Hello, sir, it's Toombs. It crashed where? Ireland. Kerry? The plane must have been ten minutes early, otherwise I can assure you it had to go down over open water. I did not make a mistake. I never make mistakes, you know that. Yes. Yes, Grossman is with me. To Dublin? Yes, sir. Yes. We leave right away. Nationals involved. Yes, but I mean, this is a uniform branch job. After all, it's an accident. What do you want to pull me off the crime squad for? Well, I, I thought you were of an age when you might be able to bring a sense of compassion oh. to those involved. I don't want to send a young rookie down there, yeah. stamping all over everybody's feelings. Oh, well, if you feel you can trust me with it, I suppose I am. Look, Montellus, what happened? Look, about two days ago, an executive plane belonging to an American corporation called uh, Fenway Chemicals took off from Rome, bound for New York. It was due to refuel here at Shannon. It came down here in Kerry, on course for Shannon, just across the coast. And what was the reason for the crash? No one seems to know. Eyewitnesses say it appeared to blow up in midair. Where's the wreckage? Well, everything's laid out for you in a hangar in Kerry. I want you to go down there, take a few notes, and make a report. Just for the record. Do you mind if I bring Buck Haggerty along with me? What for? He'll want a per diem. Ah, no, no, no. I'll take care of that. That's my next pay envelope. Buck Haggerty is in awe of everybody, Tom. Not just you. I, sir, I know that. But he's also a demolitions expert. Or do you not want me to have any autonomy in this authority that you've delegated to me? So wouldn't you know with the cut of his clothes, for heaven's sake? He looks nervous. Does he now? My name's Brewster, James yeah. Brewster. Uh -huh. My grandmother was Irish. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, wasn't everybody's. I'm Detective Inspector Maloney. This is Mr. Haggerty, the Dublin Police. Uh, I'm Fenway Chemicals English lawyer. This was our plane, I'm afraid. Of course, you understand, Inspector, we must protect our interests in terms of possible litigation. Uh, will I carry out my job then, Tom? Yes, you just do that. Do you know who was on board? Yeah. Robert Leonard, the pilot, Professor Ferengetti, and Mr. Romano, his assistant. They were both Italians. Ah, Professor, is that so? Yes. Chemistry, theoretical research, that sort of thing. Yeah. We considered him an absolute genius. Of course, he's a great loss, not only to the company. Ah, I'm quite sure. 
There are six bodies. Yeah. That poor family. Do you happen to know where Mr. Donegan is just now? No, he's gone home to his place in Dublin. That's Ralph Michaels, somewhere just outside Dublin, isn't it? You left London yesterday. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. You mean three days ago, just after the crash, because you were in Rome, weren't you? The sticker's on your bag there. Yes, you're quite right. Uh -huh. Professor Ferengetti left from Rome. And you went to check his hotel. What were you looking for? Just being thorough, Inspector. Ah, yes. Just being thorough. You find something? Doesn't make any sense. It's a timing device. What's left of it? Done. No question. Are you sure there's nothing here that I should know about? Well, we're just uh, combing through the wreckage. Uh, where will you be staying? At the Shelvin in Dublin. Do you happen to know? There was a briefcase found here. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I, I found Mr. Donegan's briefcase and uh, was instructed to put it in the boot of his car. No other briefcase? No, sir. That's too bad. The professor was carrying papers. They aren't irreplaceable. They thought they might have survived the crash. Tell me, Inspector, have you ever solved a case like this before? I don't mean to be rude, but have you ever worked on a case like this? I'm very sorry for your trouble, Mr. Fenwick. Thank you. Lime Detective Inspector Tom Maloney, Lovely Police. What's the police got to do with this? Well, it's, uh, it's this. Look, I'm very sorry. I, I, I really am sorry that it has to be me and uh, that it has to be me this way. Do you know what this is? I've seen a few of them. Well, we established the device was in the wing route. You telling me this wasn't an act of accident? It wasn't an act of God? No, I'm afraid it was definitely an act of man, Mr. Dunnigan. You see, I know uh, what happened and I know how it happened, but I don't know who and I don't know why. And whatever the answer to these two questions is, the bomb was planted in Rome. But the answers to the questions are outside out. And that's my territory, Mr. Dunnigan. Well, let me take it all, Mr. Dunnigan. My darlings. Please, please, will you listen? Now, believe me, there was no point in you trying to get here for it. That's the reason I didn't call you. I'm sorry you had to hear it like that. But look, it's a long way from Corsica to Dublin, and I'll come and see you as soon as I can. As soon as I get free, and then we'll talk. Hey. 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 Cut it out, will you? Yeah, I love you, too. Yeah. Yeah, I got things to do.
Smith, an Englishman uh, from London. A lawyer. Who? Uh, he says his name is Brewster. If you wouldn't mind, could you spare him a few minutes? Yeah, no, thanks, Bob. Fenway wants you to know that it's not unfeeling about me. But something, something could be worked out, something reasonable. Of course, it could ever, never make up for you your terrible loss. Just something to help out. And whoever was responsible obviously had no connection with Fenway. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Who was, the way you put it, responsible? Well, who knows that? I heard it was a bomb. Well, it was, wasn't it? Well, Fenway wouldn't never blow up their own plane. Well, somebody was responsible, weren't they? That's certain. Look, I understand a briefcase was found on the scene. A briefcase. Was the briefcase the reason for the bomb? Oh, no, no, no. It was nothing as important as that. It was just something we'd like to get back if we could to save a little time. Look, I haven't the foggiest idea why anybody would want to do this to Fenway. Maybe some demented ex-employee. The well, world is full of sick people. Could you look in the boot? I'm in your trunk. What? There's no point. The only case found was mine. Okay? I'll be at the shell then. I'll be there a few days. Yeah, I did have a thought. They've put together some things for me in a box and carry, and I've got to go through them. And if I, uh, if I find anything, I'll get in touch with you. Uh, where are we staying again? At the show, and I'll be there a few days. Yeah. I'll be waiting to see if the police find anything. Perhaps we can have a drink together. Yeah. And uh, perhaps you wouldn't mind signing a little paper, just a little letter agreement, absolving Fenway or something, just for the record along those lines. Well, sure, we'll talk about it. I'm a little out of it right now. Uh, listen, uh, do you know your way back to Dublin? Yeah, turn right and go back the way I came. No, I got a better way. Turn left. Then you come to this gas station, uh, petrol station. And then the first light, second light, turn left again. Take you straight into town, okay? Thanks, I'll try that.
Hey, Frank. Steve Donegan. How are you? Hey, listen. Off the record. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you wanted to know about somebody's insurance policy, and I steered you in the right direction. Well, I want to know the owner of the car. Registration number. O-N-I-613. It's got to be a phony. There couldn't be a license plate like that. Look at the number on the engine block. I, I haven't got the car. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll find another way. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks, Frank. Thanks, buddy. Uh, nothing right now, thanks. Uh, listen, I've been giving a lot of thought to this business of signing that document, mm -hmm. uh, absolving Fenway from any litigation for me. Well, it was very helpful of you. Though, we've now got evidence that there was no fault of our company here. Exactly. Uh, okay, Mr. Brewster, you'll get your signature. Nevertheless, whoever planted that bomb had a motive of either killing the professor or destroying something else that was in that plane. Now, what do you suppose that something else could have been? If I tell you everything that I know, will you sign my indemnification here and now? Well, Professor Ferlinghetti was employed by us as a research chemist, and he was carrying a briefcase containing company papers, technical materials, and I don't know exactly what. On the night before he left Rome, he lodged in the hotel safe a duplicate briefcase containing apparently duplicate papers. And when I arrived in Rome, obviously armed with a power of attorney, they handed me the briefcase and apparently it had been opened by force. Although the contents were intact, we must presume that they were photographed. Now when I had them examined by a resident research chemist, they turned out to be useless. So whoever did it didn't get what they came for. That's a supposition, Mr. Donegan. I was listed to only deal in facts. Yeah, all right. Now that's the why. Who's the who? Ah, Mr. Brewster, at last. I have been searching all over Dublin for you. There's a very informative doorman outside. He said you might be in here. May I sit down? I've come from London, actually, to talk to you about Fenway Chemicals. We're in the middle of a meeting, Miss Merton. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I won't be more than a few minutes. It's about that plane that blew up with Professor Ferlinghetti on board. I'm afraid there's absolutely nothing that I could or wish to talk to you about. Well, Mr. Brewster, you know someone had to be behind that crash. It's been in the papers. The plane was bombed. What kind of industrial rivals do you have with motive enough to do that? I haven't the faintest idea. Well, tell me, is it true the plane was carrying the Ferlinghetti for me? I have the faintest idea of what you're talking about, as far as I know. There's nothing to it. It could have been terrorist or a plot of some sort. Well, why would terrorists want to blow up a professor of pharmacology? I don't know. Well, is it true that Intent had been making offers recently to the professor? We have many rivals in the world of industrial pharmacology, but I, for one, am not prepared to talk about it to you, so if you'll forgive me, I have nothing more to say. Okay, Mr. Brewster. Okay. I won't trouble you anymore. That woman is such a bore. Who is she? Candy Layton. Part time financial journalist, would be investigative for reporting, which means that she has the answers before she asks the questions. Excuse me, ma'am. Miss Layton! Ah, uh, excuse me. Uh, my name's Steve Donegan. It was my family who were killed in the plane crash. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm so sorry. I noticed you staring at me. I... Well, I'm sorry about that, too. It's just incredible the way you resemble my wife. I don't know what to say. Yeah, anyway, something you said in there interested me. Uh, 
What's intent? Intent. International Enterprise Corporation. It's a huge conglomerate of enormous power. You've never heard of it? No. Well, why did you mention them in particular? Oh, there's been a rumor in financial circles recently that Professor Ferlinghetti had made some sort of a major breakthrough in the development of a really new revolutionary antibiotic. And Tower of Chemicals, which is owned by Intent, is also working on the same projects. And this guy Ferlinghetti cracked the formula first? Well, it's possible. It is possible. Uh-huh. Listen, thank you very much, and excuse me again. Look, if necessary, can I get in touch with you? Well, I'll only be here a few days. I'm staying at Fitzpatrick's in Kalani, if you want. I didn't lie to you yesterday, but I re-examined my briefcase, and it's not mine. It could be Fenway's. You, you have it? Yeah. Now listen, I, I can't take it to the house right now. I've got a ton of things to do, and I won't be home until around dawn. But if you come around breakfast time, I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. See you around. Uh, Mr. Dunnigan, the bad times will be looking for a taxi. Let me walk you over to Dublin Pass. I'll give you a lift in my car, anywhere you want to go. Don't mind about the petrol. No, thanks, I'm all right. Uh, Mr. Dunnigan, I believe you were in Kerry for the fishing, is that right? Yeah. Ah, yes, it's a great sport, fishing. My favorite sport, you might say, fishing. Why don't you say what you want to say? Mr. Brewster was interested in the briefcase. I saw the pair of in the bar together there. Yeah? Well, could I see it sometime? It's all burnt up. That's, uh, that's a pity. Why did you ring the central car registration? Huh? So Frank Pearson put me into the cops, huh? <laughs> he did, of course. All right. Listen, when Brewster left my house, and there was a car following him, I'm positive. Good. Good. So I understand. ONI-613. A fraud. I'm having it looked for. Or oh, maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Huh? You do as you like. Um, you, you wouldn't want to be doing my job for me, by any chance, would you? No. You don't need any help. No, because I was thinking, you see, that you might be thinking of revenge. So just, uh, watch yourself now, like a good man. Yes, sir. And keep in touch with me. Yes, sir.
turn on the light? Don't be stupid. The light would draw the neighbors. I, I, I stay downstairs. Fine. I'll take upstairs. Clumsy ones. Yeah, a lot of breakage. Anything missing? Uh, I don't know yet. You must be a heavy sleeper. No, not usually, but I took a pill. Uh, did you? Well, <coughs> glad to see you alive and well. All right, boys. We can leave Mr. Dunnigan to himself. Right? Okay, but it seems we have kind of mess of burglars. Your firm is constantly engaged, so the privilege of driving over here. I found this upstairs, sir. Oh yes. May I see it, please? Uh, well, yes, we'd better let Mr. Brewster see it. It may be what he's looking for. Coming, mate. Been in the fire. It's been made property, and I'm going to open it. It's empty. That was the way it was handed to me after the crash. Are you quite certain that you didn't open it? You just broke the locks yourself. That's it. That's the end of the Ferlinghetti formula. May I have the briefcase? Well, strictly speaking, 
I should keep it, but if Mr. Dunham doesn't mind... Yeah, sure, yes, take a bit to New York. Ben Mays, just be something tangible. I'm sorry, would you like a drink for your trip? Oh, no, thanks, sir. I want to catch that five o'clock plane to London, so will you excuse me? Excuse me. No, no, more, dear. She dialed the number. All you got to do is say who I am. Okay? Thank you. Yes? Well, our policy is not to reveal information about... Yes, well, my superior said it was all right if Mr. Dunnigan positively identified himself. Thank you very much. The car was rented by a Mr. Toombs. Toombs. T-O-O-M-S. Jasper Toombs. And it was charged to a credit card company, wasn't it? You're a Trav. It's billed to a corporate account. Intent. International Enterprises Corporation. Does it say where their main office is? Oh, yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's London. 23 Leicester Square. Got it. Listen, thank you so much. You're welcome. very kind. sick about this in Connecticut, New York, too. Yeah, thanks. Well, what are you doing here? The company is your friend. They want you to take off. You know, a healing period. They want you to come in as you like, go as you like. What you please. What if I please put you back on the plane in New York? Wrong. You've got it wrong. Did you know the company has insurance on you and your family? Yeah. I've got here a check in the round figure of you ready? One hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. One hundred and fifty thousand? Cashier's check, instant good. And that employee's policy is for a hundred thousand. What's the extra fifty grand for? The company cares. Do you know what they said to me? Tell them to go round the world. Well, that just didn't come from nobody. Came right down from the tippy top. What's the tippy top, Connecticut? Higher. Forget it. Higher. It's the biggest insurance company in the world. There's higher. What do you care? You mean we've been swallowed by a bigger fish? Yeah, that's who sanctioned the fifty grand bonus on account of the tragedy. Who is it? Who owns it? Do you know? Yeah, I know. I'm not supposed to, but I know. Bedroom confident. My lips are sealed. Well, unseal them. Intent. International Enterprises Corporation. That's who owns us. Ever heard of them? How do you know I was here? Oh, well, I, I like to keep myself informed, you know. By the way, uh, Mr. Bruce just dead. Oh. Well, they found him at the foot of a cliff. Badly smashed up. So they got him. They, uh, who are they, by the way? I don't know. Yes. You know, I, I, I sort of envy you, because you, you can get away from here, you know, whenever the fancy takes you. I'm just an old cop. I have to stay inside my own jurisdiction. But just let me give you a tip. As one fisherman to another. When you're going after the big jackpike fish, just uh, draw him in out of his own deep waters, onto your side of the bank, where you live. Hmm. Yeah. Take care of yourself, won't you? Thank Okay. Mm. 
My apologies for not calling ahead of time. Uh, my name's Steve. Steve. Can we sit down and talk? Sure. Uh, yesterday, when we met at the Shelbourne, uh, I went back into Brewster. And he had me half convinced that you were uh, some kind of a kook. Well, he's dead. Mr. Brewster? Brewster's dead. Oh, good Lord. <sighs> They'll stop at nothing. That's the reason I'm here. Who is they? I mean, what's intent? I mean, intent. Who's behind it? Gray Harrison Hunt. Never heard of him. No. No, a few people have. But he does own and control that corporation. And Intent owns and controls about 400 subsidiaries scattered throughout 45 countries. He is very, very powerful. And I think he's completely ruthless. You sound like you're talking from personal experience. Yes, well, you see, I wrote a book about Intent. Ah. I spent about three years on it. I think I must know more about that corporation than just about anybody does. My Lord, I wish I'd read the book. Well, it was never published. Well, I tried. It just seemed as if every publisher in the Western world backed off as soon as they considered publishing it. Backed off? Financial pressure? Hmm. In a way. Threats of litigation. I mean, that's expensive. Publishers do have to make money. Listen. Would you happen to have the original manuscript? I do. Could I read it? I'll, I'll, I'll read it right here in the hotel. Yes, yeah, sure. Sure, it's in my room. I'll... Come on up, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Good Lord, you're still reading? Good morning. morning. Mm -hmm. I know you don't believe it. Nobody does. I want to tell you something. I believe him. He owns Eurotrap, the credit card company. Mm -hmm. He owns your own insurance company. I found out that yesterday. Everything this, everything he touches turns to gold. How does he do it? He steals. Huh? Industrial espionage. And then when he's destroyed something, it folds. And he swallows it up. You want to hear my theory? You see, today, the way you take over the world is through religion or the media. You can own newspapers, TV stations, radio stations, motion picture studios. You can just about control the U.S. government that way. Ain't a bad theory. You're a good-looking lady with a good sound in theory. That's right. Well, now comes my theory. The only way to whip a pyramid is to cut the top off. Then it's got no point. It's true. But you have to find the top. Why don't you go to sleep? Hmm? Just go to sleep. Come on. Here? Yeah. Just put your head down. And pick your feet up. You serious? Uh-huh. Absolutely. And then, after you slept, around five or six tonight, I'll let you buy you breakfast. You know something? Oh. I think I really can. God, I'm tired. You got a deal about breakfast. Yeah. You're a very decent man, Steve. You know that? Let's go to sleep. And I'll 
and I'll stand guard. All right, let's get down to it. Where is this fellow? Gray Harrison Hunt. Why do you think I'm in Ireland? Hmm? He's got a thing for horses. Race horses? He owns them? Mm-hmm. He owns Rainbow. I know Rainbow. He's a classic horse, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Where is he tonight? Rainbow, tonight, is in a stall in Kildare. And tomorrow, he's going to run in the Irish steeplechase derby. He may win it, too. I don't think he'd miss that. Kildare. Right under me very nose. children when your plane dropped on my house. Oh. Now I know who you are. But I had nothing to do with it. No. No, hear me. I can prove it to you. Uh, what good will it do to your wife and kids to take revenge on an innocent man, Steve Dunnigan? And you are Miss Candy Layton. Why, if I'm such a monster, would I allow her to walk about and say the things she does about me? Oh, I'll admit that somebody was responsible for putting the bomb on that plane. And for the death of Mr. Brewster? Isn't that right? Brewster? Well, damn it, I have to keep tabs on this thing. I'm the obvious suspect. For all I know, I'm being framed. And that's the whole point of it. I'm just as horrified as you are. And look, I can take you to where I can prove, show you proof, that I'm as innocent of all this as you are. Oh, for heaven's sake, man, I know what you've been through. What you want is vengeance, not just random violence. What was meted out to your wife and kids. All right. I'll give you a chance. Show me. No, Steve, no, it's a trick. No trick. Just a chance to prove that I'm completely innocent. Is that your helicopter outside? Yes. All right. The three of us walk out, get aboard, and take off. And if there's any interference, you'll be the first to get it. Let's go. Let's go.
going to show me some proof. We didn't come here to listen to the story of your life. I'm sorry. Um, you have, I believe, a notion that uh, I employ a man called Toombs, is that right? Toombs, now we're getting somewhere. His credit card was charged to intent. Hmm. Uh, is Toombs out there? Would you send him in, please? Oh, and um, tell him to bring in that book of checks, will you? I'm down in your books as a villain. Well, if like you, I'd lost my entire family and had my hard work consistently rejected, I'd be as liable as you to want to kill the supposed culprit. More liable. Ah, oh, Tombs. Um, Mr. Donegan, this is my Mr. Tombs. He's one of my ablest accountants. It's not him. It's not the same one. A different man. Uh, Toombs, would you um, pull out your wallet and show it to Mr. Donegan? Uh, you have in it, do you, your driving license, some other form of identification? Uh, not, of course, your Euro travel card. Um, uh, tell Mr. Donegan, would you, uh, what happened to that? It was stolen from me in Paris a month ago in a tourist trap. A uh, Paris police report to that effect? There's a date on it. What about Professor Ferlinghetti and the formula? My dear lady, a tower chemical is one of my own, is a fierce competitor. But we are far too successful to resort to blowing up the academic community. You knew about it? Are you saying you didn't want it? The formula? I owned it. Uh, Toombs, would you open that book of checks at the pertinent page? What does that tell you, Mr. Donegan? Made out to Ferlinghetti for two million dollars. And the date? And the dates above and below it, for that matter. The day after the crash. Exactly. Thank you, Jones. Why wasn't that check given to him beforehand? Uh, having reached New York, it was arranged that a wire photocopy of the check be shown to him. I think he wanted to give Fedway one last chance to better their offer. Of course, they couldn't. You're saying he was being disloyal to Fenway? Well, I'm afraid so. It isn't cricket, perhaps, but it isn't criminal. It's business. Anyway, they were underpaying him. If you want a man's loyalty, you ought to deal generously with him. How were you going to receive the formula? Um, in New York, by an agent. Uh, here, simultaneously, the check was to be given to a designate of the professors. Nobody trusting nobody. Wait, wait a minute. Hold it. How do we know you didn't drum all this up since we left the racetrack? Including the Paris police report. You must think I'm the wizard of Oz. Oh, I admit, somebody was responsible for blowing up that plane. But I'm a loser as well. It must be clear to you by now that it was not in my best interest to do so. Uh, you run the American insurance company, Dublin Branch. Is the reason for that that you keep pushing the ball uphill? So why would you want to sneer at the man who's made it to the top? That's your own goal, isn't it? Intent. Owns my firm, don't they? Should I be shot? Why did you authorize a $50,000 check for me as a bonus? And a broad hint to travel around the world. I must be a soft-hearted idiot, obviously. Not to stop me asking questions. Well, if I wanted to, and if I'm as malevolent as Miss Layton makes out, uh, then it would have been possible to have you removed. It's awfully pat. Two plus two equals four is pat, but it's true. Miss Layton, I'm sorry about your manuscript, but it maligns me. Now, I've had to pay out money to lawyers to point that out to publishers. Seven people died when you acquired Sheridan Oil, ten years ago. 
It can take years to clinch deals. Some people die every time a merger is set up. But I did not invent the accident of death. Have you invested in certain African dictators? Yes, I have. And so have some other Western nations as well. You rank yourself a nation? I'm bigger than some. Better managed than most. Candy. Let's go. I'm not crazy. We could have arranged all this in such a short time. He could have expected this. No. So, you're crazy. Yeah. May I say how sorry I am? Truly. I'll burn what I've written. Well, I never thought I would hear you say that, Miss Layton. Now, why don't you both stay and have dinner with me? Oh, thanks. Oh, well, I'll arrange for my helicopter to take you back to London. Corsica? Well, what's in Corsica? My dad. He retired down there after the war. With a bunch of his buddies from World War II, you know. They're all ex-commandos in a group together. This was after my mom died. Hmm. Sounds a bit eccentric. Yeah, not, not, not really, not when you meet him. Thornton, Donegan. And they're all there together, you know, sharing their moments against the Nazis. And I'm kind of desperate to see him. It was really hit hard, you know, about what happened. I'd like to meet him. Yeah. Look, have a good trip to London and I'll call you when I get back. Oh, Lordy. Do you know what I'm going to work on next? In so long on this. Yeah. Well? Maybe there's a story in Corsica. I don't want you to come with me. I'm going. I'm going to Corsica. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm going. I've decided. You no, know, I can change my mind and dislike you, you know. Look, I am going to Corsica because I feel like it. That's all. I just feel like it. Women's lib. All right. Buy your own ticket and carry your own bag. All right, I will. Give me the bag. Look like Cynthia, son. She sure does. No, 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 no. Not interested. Yeah, too soon. Of course not. You're surrounded by your old crew of relics, aren't you? <laughs> You'd be amazed. I'd still take any one of them into battle with me. You still think you can go 15 rounds, don't you? When did you become arrogant? <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, they're warriors. My memory the best. Good. I'm the stranger, but they, they tolerate me. What upsets them lately is that new perfume factory they're building up. The smell? In several ways. It's bringing a lot of strangers in. The world's impinging on them. That hotel down the road, building an annex. It's all getting too civilized. It's changed. They, well, they can't enjoy it. And you? I hate it to I. It was just a nice little stretch of beach to get washed up on, a shaft of sun to sit in the evening of my life, listening to the Mediterranean sculpting, looking at faces. Faces I remember very clearly, looking scared to death and brave both at once. Yeah. Soon that thing's going to start. Chimneys spewing fumes. There'll be dead birds, fish washing up, sick to death. People start waking up, coughing their lungs out. Oh, those... Those old fellas, <laughs> they're mad as wet hens over it. Where'd your lady go? My lady? I don't know. Here she comes, right now. Hi. Catch your breath, love. Steve, listen, this perfume factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're really discussing it. It's owned by Intent. Owned by Intent. 
Well, what don't they own? Who cares? Steve, listen, there's a man at the hotel. He just arrived. And I think he works for Hunt. He's in charge of security. And uh, there's a man with him. His name is Toombs. What? Yeah. There he is. Right there. Harrison Hunt murdered my kids. Is that your Mr. Toombs? Is that the fellow that broke into your house looking for the briefcase? But you don't have that thing, do you? Oh, Lord, Steve. You do. Maybe you'd like to come with me to a little protest meeting tonight about the perfume factory. The local capo will be there. Eh bien, dis-lui. Que s'il nous aide à bousiller la fabrique ce soir, moi je tiendrai parole dans cette autre affaire qu'il fait de moi. The capo says he'll accept your offer of technical assistance during the matter of this night. As the other thing, he'll abide by your deal. It is a deal. I help him. I certainly help you. But he's got to keep his word on the other thing. If they're given the hand, they always keep the word. Capo. Security fellow Toombs, he'll check up after and find you've been here. I'm counting on that. He'll tell Hunt, Hunt, know you were Green Beret? He'll figure it. I hope so. You know something, Dad? This is gonna be like my calling card. This Harrison Hunt fella. You'll know I'm onto him. But he murdered our family. I'm gonna get him.
Medwin. I know you know the number. So just pick up the phone and call him. You're out of your mind. Tell him! If he's interested, I've got the briefcase with the papers he wants inside it. You're cracking up, you know that. Tell him! I want two million American dollars in cash in the suitcase. I never heard of anyone called Gray Harrison Hunt. I, I swear to you. Tell him! I want to see him in person. Or the deal's off. At eight o'clock tomorrow, in St. Patrick's Cathedral. son. Just keep your hands away from that briefcase.
are very foolish, Mr. Donegan. How naive. leave you. You know what to do, Mr. Toombs. Keep him here for an hour and a half until I'm airborne and well clear. Then you may complete the job for which you've been seeking permission so persistently for the past ten days. You know, all this need never have happened. We need never have been enemies. I had nothing personal against your family. The whole thing was just a Stupid accident. Yes, indeed. Uh, you must forgive me, I'm in something of a hurry. Yes, and I'm in the Irish police force. Oh. Well, what's it about? Well, if you wouldn't mind stepping into the office, thank you very long. Are yours, Mr. Hunt? Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, and the contents, your own personal possessions. Yes, of course. Well, I, I wonder if you'd be so kind as to. this morning. Declared every penny of it. You can check with current secretary. Yes, I've done that already. And the, uh, the other case, Mr. Hunt? Well, company papers, I want. Ah, yes. Well, it should be good enough to... Thank you. That's what it is, Mr. Hunt. Yes, there's been a terrible lot coming in from Corsica lately. Corsica? Hmm. Oh, I see. 
You do realize, don't you, Inspector, that this is a setup? Now, I understood you to say, Mr. Hunt, that all the contents of these cases were your own personal property. However, I, I'm sure you can make a satisfactory statement to the central police station. So if you come along with me now, Mr. Hunt. Look, Inspector. Mm-hmm. I'm a very busy man. A very rich man. I don't need to do this sort of thing. And I don't need this sort of publicity. Now, why can't we just sort this out, man to man? Uh, why don't you take this attaché case and the heroin? I'll just take the company papers and leave. We'll say nothing more about it. Mm. And that's your second serious offence today, Mr. Hunt. Yes, sir. Last night, just as soon as he had a bag packed, Right now, he told me to forward his letters to, um, here we are now, Mount Brandon Hotel, Tralee. I hope he won't mind my giving it to you. Don't you worry about it. He'll never approach you for it. Dressed in green. Thank you. America! 
I'll say that we, we buried you! What do you say? Mr. Dunnigan. Ah, uh, Mr. Toombs. It is Mr. Toombs, isn't it? He's going to kill me. Oh, is that so? No, he's, no, he's going to kill me. Um, are you going to kill this gentleman, Mr. Dunnigan? Oh, well, good day to you. You can't leave me here! Oh. Take, take, take me in charge. That sister take uh, me in charge. You see, Mr. Toombs, under the laws of this country, I can only take a man in charge if I reason to believe that he's guilty of a serious offence, or maybe a material witness in the commission of a serious offence. No, wait, hmm? wait. You, you can't leave me here with him. I'll, I'll give you the evidence. You will. Yes. Right, so. <clears throat> now, just, uh, here we are. I am Jasper Toombs, aged 43 years, is that right? Yes. Resident of Switzerland. On the morning of April the 18th in the city of Rome, in company with another man whom I identify as Fritz Grossman, right? Mm. I installed in the wing route of an executive aircraft a combustible device with intent thereby to cause loss of life. I did this on the express orders given to me personally the previous day of one Gray Harrison Hunt. So would you please uh, sign this for me? Thank you. Right, boys. Steve, there's your big jack pike fish for you. Hooks netted around the back. Never back into the water, sir. I wish you knew that yourself. Hmm? Well, I'll get rid of that thing if I were you. It's out of days already. Good man, my love. 